I'm Leonard Garrison, Associate Professor of Flute at the University of Idaho, and I'm here to tell you about the piece called Pan by Johannes Donjon. This is one of the most popular solos um, out there for the flute, and it's rated level F by the National Flute Association. It is available in many collections, such as Robert Cavalli's 24 short concert pieces, Donald Peck's solos for flute, and Jaime Voxman's concert and contest collection. There's a great deal of flute music about the Greek god Pan, who was a flute player, half man and half goat. And this is one of the best. Now the composer, Johannes Donjon, who lived from 1839 to 1912, whose name means the keep or a tower in, uh, in French, a tower of a castle, was principal flutist of the Paris Opera Orchestra, and he was a student of another famous flutist, Jean-Louis Tulu. Tulu lived, lived from 1786 to 1865, and he was a longtime professor at the Paris Conservatory in the days before the modern boom flute was adopted. Donjon wrote quite a bit of flute music. He wrote another pastoral whose name is Pipo. That's hardly ever played. He wrote a very popular offertoire or offertory and eight etudes de salon, uh, really great etudes that can be played in concert and many other works. Now the original score to this piece includes a poem that is not attributed. It may be by the composer himself. It's Pan n'est pas mort, or Pan is not dead. He's still living. He lives through, um, through the flute and you can still hear him in the woods. Now in Greek myth, Pan represented rustic music, country music, as opposed to Apollo, the god of cultivated beauty in the arts. Thus, this piece has a free improvisatory air and little cadenzas from time to time, which serve as an invitation to play freely. For the main tempo, I feel the metronome indication of quarter equals 72 is a bit too fast, and I prefer a pace of quarter equals about 63. This chart shows the form of the piece. It's an ABA or ternary form with a coda. The, the beginning section is in C major. The second section is in A minor, modulating to um, back to the dominant of C major, and we return to C major for the rest of the piece. The theme requires a large dynamic range. Although the score marks a crescendo only at the end of measure two, it is better to crescendo continuously through the first phrase, measures one through four. If you have the capacity, play this phrase in one breath. Otherwise, a small breath at the end of measure two is possible. Flutists must cue their piano, so incorporate conducting into your individual practice. For the opening of the piece, give an upbeat on an imaginary beat four with an ascending motion along with a rhythmic breath and that you let your flute down at the same time as you play the downbeat. Careful not to use a harsh tongue on this note. In fact, for soft attacks, I prefer the syllable poo, in which the lips close and trap the air behind them and let it out cleanly. You may not have played 30-second notes before. In bars one through three, count one and two for the tied first note, and then fit the four 30-second notes on the end of beat two. A good exercise is to articulate each 
eighth note subdivision in these measures. Another challenge is intonation. And if one is not careful, this first phrase will start flat and end very sharp. When you play softly, lift the airstream, use a small opening between the lips, and keep the air speed fast, just not a big amount of air. When you ascend, to the loud high G. Blow down, use a large lip opening and a relaxed embouchure, and try to slow the air down. Check yourself with an electronic tuner. The second phrase in measures five through eight is similar to the first. I breathe at the end of measure six. Although it is not indicated, a ritardando into the fermata is effective. Sustain the fermata C a little longer than two beats and indicate a cutoff so your pianist releases with you. In fact, your cutoff can function as an upbeat to the next section. And now let's listen to measures one through eight with myself, Leonard Garrison, playing flute and my wonderful colleague, Roger McVeigh, playing piano. Since the key changes in measure 9 to A minor vary the tone color, the key of A minor demands a more covered, tentative tone quality than C major. So pay attention to articulation. For instance, in the second half of measure 11, slur four notes and then two and two. This hastening of the articulation enhances the crescendo. In measure 13, en pressant le mouvement means push the tempo forward. And this goes through the end of measure 16, where you can relax and start a new phrase, making another accelerando through measure 19. For the louder ease in measure 15 and 18, remove the right hand pinky to correct intonation. Let me show you the difference. Here's with the pinky now, and it's very sharp. And it pulls into pitch if you remove this pinky. Measure 18 illustrates a common situation. When breathing after a tied note, sustain the long note right up to the next beat, but do not play the note at the end of tie. Rather, breathe at that place and insert a rest. <laughs> Measures 20 through 24 pose the greatest technical challenge. Work this section out one element at a time. First, tackle the trills. Each should start and end on the main note. An ideal number of trill shakes is three, resulting in nine notes to the beat when combined with the grace note turn. Add the thumb B flat for measures 21 and 22, and finger the A flat to B flat trill 
with the left hand, second and third fingers together. Play the trills in even notes, making sure not to pause on the last trilled note before the turn. Practice with a metronome so that you arrive on the next beat at the proper time. Next, learn the arpeggios. Measure 20 goes up and down a G major chord. Measure 21 goes up and down in A flat major. And measure 22 is up yet another step, A major. Then B flat major. Then a diminished chord based on B, D, F. Make sure you have the proper articulation through this section. Some notes are slurred and some notes are tongue. Now, put this passage together. There should be a continuous crescendo. And Donjon writes, en pressant toujours, or pushing the tempo always. The climax of the whole passage is the high F in measure 25. Play with relaxed lips and slow the air so the pitch is not sharp. In fact, because the F is the seventh of the chord, it will actually sound better a little flat. Add the right hand ring finger to correct pitch. After the fermata, there is a little cadenza, and Donjon writes a volonté, or freely. Stretch the first couple of notes in the run, a C major scale. Then gradually speed up towards the bottom. Breathe after the low G. The composer then writes entraînant, or dragging. Stretch the A flats, very expressive notes, then play the A naturals a little brighter. Vary the speed of the repeated Gs and start the trill slowly and speed up. Let the low G sustain and take a leisurely breath before proceeding. Let's hear a performance of measures 9 through 25. Measure 26 starts a varied reprise of the opening or repeat of the opening section. In measure 30, grab a full breath in the rest, but do not breathe after the fermata A flat as it resolves to the following G.
in fact, play from the low A flat here clear into the downbeat of measure 32 in one breath. Use a light, smooth tongue in measure 31. This starts as a C major scale and turns into a chromatic scale. Pause teasingly on the B trill and relax the tone into the downbeat of measure 32. Now let's hear a performance of measures 26 through 31. the coda, which starts in measure 32, en un peu, means a little faster. Play measures 33 through 35 with the thumb B flat. Use a light tone for measure 32, which is harmonized by a C major chord, but use more vibrato and color in measure 33, which has an unusual Neapolitan VI chord, F, A flat, and D flat. Same in the next two measures, but use even more tone in measure 35, as B flat does not fit with the Neapolitan VI chord. Play the last three bars in one breath. Measure 39 is a volonté, or freely. Start slow, a cello rondo, and slow down again. There is a hilarious misprint in the original edition where the last note is marked fortissimo. Obviously, this should be pianissimo. Practice using the embouchure to slur from middle G to high E with a diminuendo. Move the lips out and up. Keep the air fast and reduce the size of the lip opening. Taper to nothing. Now let's hear the coda measures 32 through 40. Good luck or bonne chance.